Hello, and in this video what I'll be doing is going over some of the solutions to the MATLAB revision exercises on Lab Sheet 1. So if you haven't already done so, you can access this Lab Sheet on Moodle. Okay, so the first question is generate an array called x at list 12 equally spaced numbers from 1 to 5 inclusive. Okay, and so to do this what I'm going to do is use a script file. So this is a MATLAB uh, script file. Okay, uh, first thing I'm going to do is define the minimum and maximum values of x. Okay, what I need now is an increment. So how? what's the difference between each successive values in the array x? And I'm going to call this dx, uh, short for delta x, and this increment is equal to the range, so the range of values is x max minus x min, divided by the number of numbers in the array minus 1. Okay, so there are going to be 11 steps, so to speak. Okay, so dx is x max minus x min over 11. Okay, and now all we have to do is define the array. So the array starts at x min, goes up in increments of dx, and ends in x max. Okay, so if I just uh, run that program, and yep, if I just move the window out of the way, here you can see the output uh, is a 12 element array, starts at 1, ends at 5, and each one is equally spaced. Okay, so that's the solution to question 1. Okay, question 2, uh, or 2 part A. Okay, uh, plot the following functions over the range x equals 0 to 1 inclusive. Okay, so the first function is an exponential function. Okay, oops, i just get that out of the way. Okay, so first thing I need to do here is define an array of x values. Um, so here we have an array, starts off at 0, uh, goes up in increments of 0.1 and ends at 1. Or just notice I use a semicolon there. Okay, uh, so there's my x values. Uh, what I have to do now is calculate the corresponding y values and just using the function where the exponential function minus 100 times x minus 0.5 dot power 2. Okay, so why have I used this dot power? Well, x is in an array. If I had just had a power symbol there, what MATLAB would have tried to do is multiply the array x by itself using matrix multiplication. And of course, because it's an array, it's a 1 by 11 array, that's not possible. What we want is element by element, um, each element of x raised to the power 2. Okay, so in order to do that, we use the dot just in front of the power symbol. Okay, so that's x and y um, defined. If I just plot x against y and run the code, oh, it's asking me just to save it. I'll call it lab sheet one question two a. Okay, so if I run that code, uh, it's not seem to be working. Uh, I'm just going to clear. Just make sure there's nothing in the memory, and I'll run that code again. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, it's just off there, off the screen. Okay, so here's the output. Uh, it's not looking that good. Uh, the reason it's not looking good is we only used 11 values in our array x. So if I was to use more values, i.e. if I was to reduce the increment, run it again, and you can see here, nice, smooth, Gaussian-type curve. Okay, so that's uh, the answer to question 2a. Okay, let's have a look at 2b. So in 2b, we have a case statement. And what this means is when a value of x minus 0.5, or the absolute of value of x minus 0.5 is less than or equal to 0.1, the y value should be 1, else the y value should be a half. Okay, so I'm, this is slightly more complicated, so I'm just going to start up a new script file. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, actually I'm not, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll leave it for now. But if I just uh, define my array, okay, same array as before. What I need to do now is I need to loop through all the values in that x array. Oops, for, so for i equals 1, uh, right the way up to length x. So length x 
just means how many numbers are in this array x here. And for each one of those, I need to check whether the absolute value of x i minus 0 0.5 is less than or equal to 0 0.1. Okay, if it is, the i the ith value of y is equal to 1. If it's not, else, the ith value of y is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, uh, if we end that, and uh, we've got an ever end, and then I just plot x against y. Okay, if I run that, it's going to ask me to save it, so if I do so, like sheet 1, and this is question 2b. Okay, so if I save it and run it, and this is the output. Now this output is um, the axes in the y direction going from 0 0.5 to 1, and it's actually sort of obscuring some of the details. So what I'm going to do here, just set the axes to be 0 to 1 in the x direction and 0 to 1.5 in the y direction. Uh, if I run that again, and this, this is the output. So as you can see here, what we've got is when x, uh, absolute value of x minus uh, 0 0.5 is less than or equal to 0.1, y is equal to 1. All over elsewhere, y is equal to 1 half. And this uh, type of function is sort of nicknamed nickname of a top hat function because it sort of looks like a top hat. Okay, so that's question two. Okay, what about question three? Uh, newton raphson method. So we want to uh, write a program that calculates the uh, newton raphson solutions or the root finding method. Okay, so this is uh, more of a complicated program because what this is going to use is going to use functions. So uh, I'm going to call the function newton raphson So if the first word of an M file is function, this tells MATLAB that we're writing functions. Now the reason why I'm using a function here is so that I can also put sub-functions within the same file. So what I'm going to start off doing is actually defining the fun polynomial function that I want to calculate. Okay, so this is given in uh, question 2 part b. Uh, let's go times x squared minus 3.55 times x plus 1.75. Okay, so that's my function f of x. So this is actually from this bit here. Um, the newton raphson method requires f of x, also requires f dash of x. So I need to calculate another function, which calculates the derivative of f of x. And I'm going to call that dfx. So dy is equal to 3 times x squared plus 1.6 times x minus 3.55. Okay, so I've used two two sort of little functions to calculate f of x and dfx. So newton raphson method requires a guess value, so I'm going to ask the uh, user to actually enter a guess value for the root of f of x. Okay, so this input command, this will come up with a prompt up, prompting the user to enter some number. Okay, so the newton raphson method, it iterates into what we call convergence. Okay, so the difference between two successive iterations, or two successive estimates of the root, um, as long as that's, the difference is greater than some very small number, um, we keep iterating. So, for example, here I've used a tolerance, or toll, of 1 times 10 to the minus 6, very, very small number, 1 millionth. And I've set the difference to be 1. Okay, it doesn't matter what this difference is as long as it's greater than this number here. Okay, so I'm going to use a while loop to calculate the iterations while the difference is greater than toll. So as soon as the difference is less than this number here, we stop. Okay, and the next estimate of the root is xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of x n divided by f dash or the derivative of x n. Okay, so that's the next um, estimate using the newton raphson method. What I have to do now is calculate the absolute difference between
between the two estimates and update the old estimate. Okay. And what I should do here is output, print some output message saying the root. Uh, one actually, we're only calculating one root, so one root of the function f of x is, and I'm going to quote it to four decimal places, and that's going to be x n. Okay, so this is our function Newton Rapson. Uh, yeah, let's see if it works. I'm going to press F5. Ask me for a name. Uh, should really call because the function is called Newton Rapson. Should really call it Newton Rapson. Okay, so straight away it's come up with a prompt, guess value of f of x. Now I know that one of the root is close to minus 2.5, so I'm going to actually say minus 3. Okay, so what's happened here, it's come up with some red letters and it's saying there's a problem with f print. Okay, so at line 18, as you can see here, I forgot the f on the f end of f print, so I'm going to try that again. There we go. So if we enter a guess value of minus three, it's given us the root of two minus two point five. I also know there's another um, a root which is actually at one. So I'm going to tr try a start value of two, and you can see it's given me the value of one. Okay, so uh, you can use your program to actually calculate the third root of this polynomial function here. Okay, right. Finally, uh, question four. Write a program that generates a 5x5 five five matrix containing the first 25 numbers of the Fibonacci series. Okay, well the Fibonacci series is the next number, so this number here is simply the sum of the previous two numbers. So 2 is 1 plus 1, 3 is 2 plus 1, 5 is 2 plus 3, and so on and so forth. Right, so this problem actually requires us to loop through all the elements of this 5x5 five five array. So we're in this case we're going to need a um, nest, set of nested for loops. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do is just going to start with defining the first two numbers of the sequence, and that always starts at zero and one. And then I'm going to use a pair of nested loops. So for i equals one to five, and for j equals one to five. Okay. So for i equals 1 to 5, this is going to loop through the rows. So, so think about i going down here. So when i is 1, we're going to calculate the first row. When i is 2, we're going to calculate the second row, etc, etc. The j loop will go across the columns. So when i is 1, j goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then i goes to 2 and j goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 again. Okay, so this nested for loop is quite common when we're dealing with uh, two-dimensional arrays. Okay, so that's my um, nested loops. I'm just going to end them just so, so I don't forget later. Okay, now the first two numbers are a special case. So for the first two numbers, I'm going to have to say, if we're on the first two numbers, let's um, output either 0 or 1. So I can use uh, logic here. So if i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1, this means we want the element of the first row, first column to be 0. So I'm going to use x just to denote um, my matrix. So that should be equal to a. Else, if on the second element, Okay, so we're still on the first row of 1, but this time we're on the second element. Okay, x, i, j should be equal to b. Okay, that, that only applies for the first two, um, first two elements of x. For all other elements, okay, we have x, i, j is equal to a plus b. Okay, so what this has done here is this has calculated the next value in the Fibonacci series. Uh, once we've done that, we need to update A and B. So A, which is the oldest, it's a, uh, the one uh, two previous to the current one, gets updated to B, and B gets updated to what we've just calculated. Okay, so there's 
there we have it. Uh, I'm just going to output, make sure we output the X at the end and run it, and fingers crossed. And this is lab sheet one question. Okay, let's see what we have here. Ooh, that looks rather horrible. Okay, so obviously I've got a mistake here. So it's not giving me what I thought it would. Ah, I think I know what the problem is, is I haven't cleared the memory to start with. It's always good practice just to clear the memory before you start anything else. So if I try and run that again. And there we have uh, our correct... Um, that's our correct matrix. So just compare it to the one which was in from the question. So I bring that in here. As you can see, we have the a five by five matrix which contains the first twenty five terms of the Fibonacci series. Okay, so I hope this video has helped you. Um, these questions were purely, purely designed just to give you a bit of revision on MATLAB and to prepare you for what we're going to do later this term.